we can reach our shared aims in education, science, and culture in Southeast Asia and beyond. The Southeast Asian Ministers of Education Organization, SIMEO, is a regional intergovernmental organization established in 1965 among the governments of Southeast Asian countries to promote regional cooperation in education, science, and culture. Vietnam, readmitted as a SIMEO member state in 1992, hosts the SIMEO Regional Training Center Simeo Retrack in Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. Simeo Retrack is mission driven to assist Simeo member countries in identifying and addressing issues of education. The Simeo Retrack Governing Board is the main policy making body of the center. The Governing Board consists of one representative from each of the 11 Simeo member countries. The center is headed by the director, who is nominated by the Minister of Education and Training of Vietnam, approved by the RETRAC Governing Board, and officially appointed by the Simeo Council President. The center is staffed by qualified academic, administrative, and service personnel. In October 1996, Simeo RETRAC started operation with only six employees. But over the past 20 years, the center's staff has continually increased to better meet the organization's growth. The center's leadership and staff follow our core values of excellence, professionalism, integrity, collaboration, and partnership. Simeo Retrack envisions to become a regional center of excellence in the field of educational leadership and management by providing Simeo member countries, especially Cambodia, Lao PDR, Myanmar, and Vietnam with relevant programs of research, training, consultancy, information dissemination, community service, networking, and partnerships. In addition, Simeo Retrack offers language training, teacher training, information and communication technology training, and other training programs customized for the region's needs.
Good morning, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for joining us today at the virtual seminar on innovations in higher education, leadership and management, leaders roles and strategies for assuring institutions quality to thrive in the pandemic. Conducted by the Southeast Asian Ministers of Education Organization, Regional Training Center in Vietnam, Simeri Drek. My name is Huynh Ngoc Thao. I am Program Officer from the Division of Education from Simeri Drek. Today, we are very honored to welcome over 160 participants who are leaders, administrators, and lecturers of universities and colleges from different countries in the Southeast Asian region joining the seminar on the Zoom platform and via YouTube channel. Please type the names of your city and country in the chat box or in comments so that we would know where you are joining live with us at the moment. And if you want to interact with us, please feel free to send us your questions. The CMS Recheck team will approach you shortly. Right now, would you mind waiting us for a few minutes? Our opening ceremony will start sharply at 8.30 Vietnam time. Thank you very much.
Distinguished guests, welcome to the virtual seminar on innovations in higher education, leadership, and management. Leaders' pros and strategies for assuring institutions' quality to thrive in the pandemic, which is conducted by Simeo Regional Training Center in Vietnam, Simeo Retra. On August of the 27th, 2021, for different higher education institutions in Southeast Asia. Before we start, may I remind you of housekeeping rules for the seminar. First, upon your entry, please type your country and then your full name so that we can approach you quickly in case you need any assistance from us. Second, during the seminar, if you have any questions regarding the speaker's presentations, please type your questions in the chat box or in comments on YouTube. Our team will combine and pass the questions to the speakers at the Q&A section. Third, please stay muted to enable the speakers to present without any interruption. All the sessions will be recorded. Finally, please complete the evaluation form at the end of the seminar. Those who fully attend the seminar and complete the evaluation form will then receive an e-certificate acknowledging your participation by email. And now, to officially commence the opening ceremony, I am very honored to introduce to you our distinguished guests and participants of the virtual seminar today. It is my pleasure to introduce to you Dr. Ho Thanh Mi Phu, Director of Simeo Retract from Vietnam. Dr. Randall Martin, Executive Director, British Columbia Council for International Education, BCCIE from Canada. I am also delighted to introduce to you our distinguished speakers of the seminar, Mr. Takin, Vice Rector, Royal University of Phnom Penh from Cambodia. Mr. Brett Griffiths, Dean, School of Trace Technology and Design, Vancouver Community College from Canada. Mr. Keith Mill, Department Head, Automotive Collision and Refinishing from Vancouver Community College from Canada. Dr. Chish N. Banar, Head, Planning and Quality Management Assurance, St. Paul University, Dumaguete from Philippines. and Associate Professor Le Van Hel, Education Quality Assurance Consultant, Secretary of the Accreditation Committee, Center for Education Accreditation, Thang Long, Vietnam. And last but not least, we welcome more than 160 participants coming from various higher education institutions from Cambodia, Lao PDR, Malaysia, Myanmar, Philippines, Thailand, and Vietnam to the seminar today. Ladies and gentlemen, please allow me to briefly go through the agenda of our seminar this morning. For the schedule of the seminar, we will start with a welcome and opening remarks by Dr. Ho Tan Mi Phuong, Director of Simia Redra, and a group photo section. After the opening ceremony, we will begin our first presentation entitled 
virtual reality in Vancouver Community College and then have a Q&A section. Next, we will have a 10 minutes break before we move to the other three presentations. After that, a Q&A section will be conducted too. We may end our section earlier and the closing ceremony will be tentatively at 11.30 Vietnam time. To start with, ladies and gentlemen, may I now invite Dr. Ho Thanh Mỹ Phương to give her welcome and opening remarks. Thank you. Distinguished Dr. Randall Martin, Executive Director, BCCIE in Canada. Distinguished speakers from Canada, the Philippines and Vietnam. Dear participants from the Southeast Asian countries, see Mary Trapp, manager and staff, good morning. It is my great honor and pleasure to welcome all of you to the regional trainings uh, uh, to attend the seminar on innovation in higher education, leadership manage and management leaders' roles and strategies for assuring institutions' quality to try in the pandemic. As all of you can see, since early 2020, the description caused by the COVID-19 pandemic have vastly affected education at all levels around the world. With quarantine and social distancing applied, Universities and colleges all have to use online teaching and learning as an alternative modality to make teaching and learning take place. Under that situation, higher education institutions have to face the quality issue. How to ensure the quality of online teaching and learning? Universities and colleges leaders need to have proper strategies to ensure that their institution's quality um, um, is uh, ensured and to drive in the pandemic. Ladies and gentlemen, the COVID-19 pandemic has demanded higher education, education institutions to operate under unstable condition in which on teaching staff must be able to use ICT to do their teaching and research grown. Higher education institutions have to force to quickly implement a lot of changes in the operation from training, traditional training to online training, including changing in the um, current teaching and learning practices assessment of the learner's achievement. With the aim of providing a platform for the leaders, the managers and lecturers at higher institution, higher education institution to exchange effective leadership and management strategies in the COVID-19 pandemic. See Mary Truck is an honor to organize this seminar to support the effort of addressing the issues regarding academic leadership in crisis and foster innovative solutions to strive for the educational quality. We are very privileged to have the presentations of educational leaders, managers from different universities and educational organizations at this seminar to share knowledge experience good practices um, on their own and the strategies of institutions to ensure the institution quality in the why and the post COVID-19 pandemic period. I'm very happy to welcome all the speakers from the different educational contexts from Canada, from the Philippines, Cambodia and Vietnam to share at this seminar. 
The seminar today has over 160 participants from Southeast Asian countries. And they are educational lecturers, leaders, administrators, researchers from different universities and colleges. And, and I'm very happy to welcome all of you as participants of this seminar. The purpose of this seminar today is to provide an opportunity for participants to update themselves with current good practices and innovations currently used to reshape educational leadership at higher education institutions. And the seminar today is also to promote dialogues and collaborations among the leaders, the administrators, and educators on the creation and adoption of education innovations to ensure the institution's quality. I would like to thank, firstly, Dr. Randall Martin for your partnership, for your support to send us the speakers to this seminar. I'd like to thank all the seminar speakers, Mr. Beth Griffith, Mr. Gray Moo, Mr. Tuck Kin from Canada, Associate Professor Le Van Hao from Vietnam, and Dr. Tichi N. Bani from the Philippines for arranging your time to repair and to share your expertise and experience at this seminar. Your contribution is highly recognized and appreciated. I would also like to thank all the participants who are very interested to register and join the seminar today. My thanks also go to retract managers and staff who have worked hard to prepare for this seminar. I hope you will have um, a very interesting, informative and productive seminar today. I wish all of you good health and happiness. Thank you all very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Ho Thanh Mi Phuong, for the warm welcome to all our participants. Next, ladies and gentlemen, to commemorate this event, may I request you to turn your video on for the photo section. One minute for our distinguished participants to turn on the camera, please. Thank you. Now, the first group photo. The second group photo. The third group photo. Thank you so much, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, now may I introduce to you the speakers of our first presentation. We are very honored to welcome Mr. Brett Griffiths, Dean, School of Trace Technology and Design, Vancouver Community College from Canada, and Mr. Keith Mill, Department Head, Automotive Collision and Refinishing. Sorry, our participants, I will share screen again. We are very honored to welcome Mr. Brett Griffith, Dean School of Trace Technology and Design from Vancouver Community College from Canada, and Mr. Keith Mill, Department Head, Automotive Collision and Refinishing, Vancouver Community College from Canada. 
Let's talk is about virtual reality at Vancouver Community College. Presentation will provide an overview of how some departments in the School of Trace Technology and Design were able to pervert to increase the use of virtual reality to help students meet their learning outcomes. It also includes a brief look at some future directions for virtual reality and augmented reality at Vancouver Community College. During the presentation, if you have any questions, please send them to us. Thank you very much. Now, may I invite Mr. Griffiths and Mr. Mill. The floor is yours. Great, thank you. Good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you for your warm welcome. Um, the presentation today will change a little bit. We're not going to talk about um, augmented reality today. Um, we're just going to focus on virtual reality and some of the things that we used in COVID. The first demonstration that I'm going to provide, let me put up a slideshow here first. Um, so we'll have some quick reference. Um, so again, uh, I'm Brett Griffiths, I'm the Dean for the School of Trades, Technology and Design here at uh, Vancouver Community College. And I have uh, Keith Mew here with me to uh, do the demonstration on the uh, automotive collision um, welding and virtual paint simulator, um, just so you'll get a live demo of that. Um, a quick overview here for you. The things I'm just going to show you that we've been using um, recently for virtual reality to enable students to um, improve learn have improved learning outcomes, um, with a variety of different topics. I'm just gonna focus on two different ones here, Enscape, which is a plugin for AutoCAD Revit. So if you're familiar with um, AutoCAD, it's a drafting program. Uh, Revit is the 3D version of it. So it's used for building information modeling. Here at VCC, we have a diploma program, a two-year program for um, that focuses on computer-aided drafting and building information modeling. Um, in our second year of the program, the capstone project for students is a um, is actually a 3D structure. Um, it's actually like a moon. Uh, it's actually originally designed to be a moon landing um, livable habitable space that's mapped into a, a portion of the desert on the Earth. Now, I would love to show you that, but the file is too big for it to work well um, in a share. So what I'm going to quickly do is I'm going to show you how we use um, Revit um, to enable students to better understand what is actually happening in the background of a house or a home or something that's constructed. So they can see what those individual parts look like and they can be immersed in that environment. So what I'm gonna quickly do is I'm gonna switch over to another computer that I have nearby here that has a Revit loaded as well as the Enscape plugin along with the Vive uh, Pro headset. And uh, what will happen is you'll be able to see what the headset sees while I'm within the structure and and a great piece about this software is Revit enables us to do live changes to the draft. So I can take out a wall, I can take out a sink, I can take out a cabinet, whatever, and then you'll be able to see what's in behind that or, or what a space might look like without it. So we've seen students or graduates um, take this information and apply it directly in the workplace following um, these courses. Additionally, um, some people have done small smaller scale companies that do drafts for home renovations, and they can record demonstrations or fly throughs of what those potential renovations to homes or structures might look like. So let me just pause this uh, right here. I'm going to go to the next slide for the demo. And I'm gonna stop sharing on this screen and then switch it over to a different computer. So just give me a second here. Okay, so hopefully everyone there should be able to see my screen, um, which has on the left hand panel, um, the window for Revit. And then on the right hand panel, there's a window for um, Enscape, which is the 3D plugin. So essentially what this plugin does is it takes the, the drafts and then converts it into 3D. And then I have a virtual space that I can work within to travel around it, see what things look like and make live changes well, it's in effect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the headset on and I'm going to get Keith to go over and um, 
just quickly press delete on something so you can see what will happen live. And this is what the students would see live. And my apologies, um, the license for um, Enscape expired recently. So I'm stuck with a trial. So it's got like this background kind of stuff in it. My apologies, it kind of hinders the quality a little bit, but it should still work. Okay, so right now you can see the structure here in front of me and hopefully you can see me on the screen in the other window here. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna zoom in, go into this kitchen structure here and well, hopefully teleport somewhere that's uh, not, right, I'm almost here. Okay, so Keith, what I'm gonna get you to do is you, I've highlighted on the other screen you folks should be able to see both sides of the, the screen where you are. Keith, just hit delete on the section that's there on the keyboard, and it should wipe out this uh, entire cabinet here if, uh, if things are working perfect. Okay, so what this enables is, so it enables our students to see what is actually happening behind things. A better example might be a wall, um, because this current, this current draft or model doesn't have the wood frame or steel frame structure inside the walls. But what you could also do is I could take down some of the um, drywall that's, uh, that's lining these walls. I could take that out and then students could actually see what is in behind. Now that could, depending on the detailed level of the draft, it could include electrical, it could include plumbing, it could include um, HVAC, but it helps students to better understand when they're building something, what might happen to it. It also enables them to see where there might be clashes. Keith, can you press Control Z on the keyboard, please? Okay, so we've got this cabinet back, and what I'm going to do, I'm just going to move up a bit here. And so, Keith, the the cabinet is still highlighted. Can you just press the right cursor until it pushes this cabinet into or maybe through the wall? <laughs> or maybe it won't work. <laughs> oh, there we go. I think it's moving now. So essentially they can see live what is happening immediately in the draft when they make changes. So in order to avoid clashes, which this is an obvious example of that, we've got this very large structure that we're just moving and pushing into a wall. It may not be as obvious in a typical draft when you're reviewing it, that there's actually an issue with it. But if you do a walkthrough, once everything has been completed, then you can see where there may be any potential errors or problems within that work. Um, in addition to this uh, 3D view and walkthrough, to enable students to see that. They will also demonstrate or do a recorded video or flyover through whatever structure they've created or designed um, in, their, in their capstone project. And that's a kind of uh, saleable piece maybe to enable them to um, have something to provide to a potential em employer to show that they created this, this, um, this draft and this object as, as part of a team. And it, it really reflects what happens in industry. So I'm just going to take this off for a second. I hope everyone can still hear okay. And what we're going to do at the end of this, let me just switch back here. Okay, Keith, I'm gonna to have to get you to reconnect um, the headset. So just go to share, yeah. So just give us a second here, my apologies. We just need to reconnect the, the headset as it goes to sleep. And what Keith is gonna demonstrate is two different things. I don't have the uh, PowerPoint slide up anymore, but we're going to be using a simulation software that's, called, uh, that's made by a company called Skillberry. And they're based out of India. They've been an absolutely amazing company for us. They've taken the software that originally we needed a very high-end computer for and a very expensive headset in order to get it to operate. And they've ported that software into something portable, such as the Oculus Quest 2, which is very, very inexpensive. And we can send this to our students off-site, at home, 
at a very low cost. The, the, the device itself is around, you know, $1,000 Canadian. So it's a much lower risk to have a student take home. And then they can practice welding and painting at home before they come into the shop, which during COVID has been absolutely great. We've been under, you know, restrictions around smaller class sizes. And in order to get people trained in an efficient manner, this helps them get up to speed a lot quicker. And then they come in and, and are better able to, to manage that. So I'm just going to adjust this a bit. And can you tell M me the code? M A X H Q N. Okay, so hopefully this will connect. Hang on just one second here. I'm just going to stop the share for a second and then try again. Can you try um, again one more time? Thanks. D L L X K Y. There we go. And I'm going to try and full screen this. And okay, so Keith is going to continue with the demonstration from this point. You should be able to see um, one of us on the screen, and uh, you can actually see what he's doing in the background here with respect to um, this application. And then you can see the live stream from that application. I'm going to leave it to him for now. Thanks, Keith. All right. Uh, hi, everyone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you uh, two of the simulations that we typically will use in some of our basic programs. Uh, and that's going to be welding. And then I'll show you spraying uh, an automotive vehicle after that. So two really basic skills that we lean on in auto collision. Um, and uh, two skills that uh, take an amount of time and practice uh, to become proficient in. So one thing that I can do uh, initially to start off is uh, with the welder. Um, one type of welding that we uh, do a lot of in uh, auto collision repair is MIG welding. So it's metal inert gas welding uh, and we'll use um, a welding uh, gun just like this. So what's great about this app is I have a bunch of different options and settings uh, that I can adjust. And the way to change them is uh, with this virtual welder uh, and the, the knobs and buttons, just like with a, a real welder. So the first thing I'll do is I'll pick my uh, shielding gas to use, and then I can go over and look at this wall and I can decide what kind of welding I want to do, what type of steel or uh, aluminum, what type of metal to use, as well as different um, welding joints, uh, and then different uh, orientations of that workpiece. Uh, we'll keep it pretty simple, uh, and I'll simply do a butt weld uh, on steel. So uh, I have a couple options. I can move this around to make it comfortable uh, for me to, to weld, and as I turn the unit on, it will then let me weld. All right. So what this really helps me do is uh, get a visual reference of how close I should be moving, uh, how quickly, uh, what travel path to make while I'm welding, which, um, you know, when I'm doing this in the real world and in a shop, uh, it can be a little bit dangerous. There's sparks, there's fumes. I have the risk of burning myself. So this is a nice way uh, to introduce myself into this process uh, without being in any danger of hurting myself. So as I go, I then visually figure out how close or far away I should be from the welding uh, piece, and then I can engage the welder. And what's great about this is it's giving me feedback, okay? So it's giving me feedback on how far away or how close I should be, as well as 
It's showing me my speed, my path. And these are things that are really difficult to explain to a student as you're trying to train them. Now, I can simply give this to a student. They can have, uh, have a go at it, try it out a bit, and start to make some of these simple uh, corrections by themselves with this feedback. So I've produced a weld, um, and now I can give myself uh, some feedback on how I've done uh, with a scorecard. So I can go to this option right here, and it is now going to generate a report, which will tell me how I did, where I maybe went too fast, uh, I passed, um, and then it shows me my deficiencies within my welds. In these X's right here, uh, I wasn't quite in the, uh, the welding joint, and so I know for next time, I can pay more attention to where exactly I'm pointing the welding gun as I'm welding. All right. So what I'll do now is I'm going to get out of the welding simulator. I will now access the uh, refinishing simulator. And it transforms me and it transports me into a spray booth, which is where we would be painting in real life. I have the option to pick up a spray gun. And as I select it with my right hand, it then shows up uh, in the virtual world. I have a bunch of different uh, courses or lessons that I can do. And again, um, it gives me some feedback to really help correct some of the movements that I'm making uh, and allow me to um, adjust myself so that when I do try this, in real life, um, I've kind of made some of the, the simple mistakes, some of the, the basic learning, uh, and I can get into it with a bit more success off the bat. So what I will do is start right here. I'm gonna click my machine settings, which allows me to now make some adjustments with uh, the type of paint I'm gonna use, as well as every other adjustment you would be making on a real uh, live spray gun. I'm going to simply change the color. As I select change color, it puts me into a mixing room, whereas we would, where, is, where we would mix color in real life as well. And I can pick a color and now go ahead and start to paint. Um, what I'll do is I'll start to paint this vehicle, uh, just a section of it to kind of demonstrate the movements and the feedback that it gives me. But as I go right here, so as you can see, I can start to spray. And again, just like with the welding simulator, this is giving me some feedback, right? So right now it's telling me to be a little further away, as well as it's giving me that gauge to help tell me how fast I'm going, if I should speed up, if I should slow down. But also a really difficult part about automotive spraying is being able to keep steady almost a robotic in movement, as well as keep nice straight um, overlaps. And so what's great is this is giving me the feedback and this is just allowing me to practice where in a situation like we've been dealing with in Vancouver, as uh, Brett had mentioned, you know, we're struggling with smaller class sizes to create more social distancing. We have a little bit of reduced class time um, to free up shop space. And now I have the ability to give my students uh, a learning tool to help develop these movements because the only way to become proficient with it is to do it and to practice with it and develop this muscle memory. And so as I go, I can simply paint just like I would in a real, uh, real life situation. The other wonderful thing about this is I have the ability to change my work pieces. You know, I have the ability to spray a whole vehicle, which the way you approach this in real life, uh, you know, can be quite daunting. But if I've done it virtually a few times, I can come into it with a game plan uh, the first time that I try. So as I continue on, I will spray. It's showing me the boundaries. I'm uh, kind of stepping within, within, 
outside of the boundaries of my playing area and so on. Now, what's great about this, there's some really difficult things to give a student feedback and to help them learn how close and far away they should be when they're painting. This is giving me a, vi a visual reference. Red, I'm a bit too far. Yellow, I'm getting too close. And I can go right here. This is now an appropriate distance. If I'm practicing with this uh, virtual tool, I can see how close or far away I should be. And now when I go in real life, I have this as a reference, right? Same thing with my speed, with my travel path. And uh, so as a student, I've done some, I can kind of see how I've done and I can produce a report again. So as I go over here and I can click my scorecard. Now, because I didn't go through all the steps, obviously this is an entire vehicle and I sprayed very little of it. Um, I, I didn't pass this particular uh, lesson, but what's great are the feedbacks that it's giving me. So one thing that it does is, that I really like is this movement graph. As I click the movement graph, it's giving me a replay of what I've actually done, all right? It's telling me when I've gone uh, a, a bit too, too slow and too fast. And it also shows me how straight each pass I make is. Now, if I'm a student who's just started this a lot of times, this will be up and down and be quite wavy. I can look at this and I can try to make those adjustments the next time I try. Another great thing is this thickness map. So as we click this thickness map, it is now showing me um, where I've gone too heavy uh, and applied too much paint or on the sides in yellow where I haven't applied uh, enough and green where I applied just the right amount. So with, these, uh, with this feedback and this visual reference, you know, this is something that is very difficult for me to do as an instructor uh, with a student. And also it helps to isolate some of these, uh, some of these uh, key factors in, in producing a proper uh, paint job. When you're in a spray booth, there's a lot of things going on. Uh, there's compressed air uh, that can be uh, quite distracting as well as all the other visual uh, things going on. This allows me to isolate and focus on a few of the different aspects of it, master that, and then move on to the next. So that when I do try this in real life, uh, I have more confidence, I have a bit of muscle memory and practice with these movements, and uh, it, it does really truly help to give me more success without wastage, without wasting consumables or expensive paint, or being in a dangerous environment, or simply not being able to be in a collision shop in general. So because, like we've mentioned, uh, reduced class sizes, reduced class time, this now gives us the ability to uh, give to the students and they can practice at home, right, when they're not able to be in a collision shop. Perfect. Great. Thanks so much, Keith. So what we're going to do now is I'm just going to stop the share here. And, um, you know, I have a slide that's uh, asking for questions. So basically, we'll just put it open. We'll open up to the floor for questions. Um, Keith may be able to answer some better than I and vice versa. So I'll just pause here for a minute. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Brett Griffiths and Mr. Keith Mill for the very informative and engaging presentation. Next, we'll move to the Q&A section. Please wait for us for one minute to collect the questions from our participants. And our participants, distinguished participants, please quickly send your questions regarding the first presentation of Mr. Griffiths and Mr. Mill to us. We will cover as many questions as we can. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much, our participants. We have received some questions from our participants regarding the presentation from Mr. Brett Griffiths and Mr. Keith Mill. Now, may I invite Mr. Griffiths and Mr. Mill to answer the question, please. Certainly, I'm gonna let Keith answer the first question that we can see in the chat box here. Yes, uh, so yeah, the first question for you is how your students can have such tools at home for joining the virtual practices? So one thing that's happened in Vancouver is we've been able to bring students in, but in reduced class sizes and for shorter durations of class. So, you know, we're lucky we're delivering what we call a hybrid delivery. All of our theory is delivered through Zoom, just like this. Um, but we still are able to bring students into our collision shop, but with reduced numbers and for shorter duration. So this gives us the ability to hand this tool off to our students. They can sign it out and then use it at home uh, when they're not active in class. Thank you very much, Mr. Mill, for your answer. Now, the next question. Oh, well, so the next question is for you is, I'm very impressed with the well-linked and automotive banking programs at PCC when adopting virtual reality to provide students with hands-on practice. What are the challenges of the school and the students when first employing this kind of technology in teaching? How much does it cost to set up one program like that? Are students required to practice on-site at school? And can they practice at home only? That's a, that's a great question. I think we'll try to answer it together. Um, so with the first part, um, what are the challenges? Well, one of our biggest challenges was actually the procurement process. Um, in uh, British Columbia, Canada, we have to follow uh, ministry guidelines when we purchase materials and purchase software. So um, depending on the cost of it, 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 it can take some time. Um, initially, we also ran into challenges with, with actually getting some of the Quest 2s and um, just because of supply chain issues. That, that delayed the rollout a little bit, but we we're still able to get in the hands of some students. Um, cost, cost varies and I can't, like, I can't provide you specifics around the software licenses. What I can tell you for us is um, they set it up in a tiered manner such that the, the initial licenses were somewhere around $3,000 per unit. And then as you purchased more licenses, they had a reduced cost with a higher number of them. Um, the Oculus Quest for Business is about $1,000 Canadian. Um, the reason we chose the one for business is it allowed our IT department to provision the software out to the units individually, and it locks it down such that students can't install their own games, log into their Facebook account, all those other things. So it's basically only a learning tool. It's no longer can be used for gaming, at least for that purpose. Um, with respect to curriculum, we haven't really modified the curriculum that much in order to change the program. It's really just been taking the simulation piece and enabling students to practice at home. Um, I'll let Keith elaborate a little bit more on the practice on site at school, but generally speaking, um, from my experience is VR is very good at low level initial skills, but once you get into those higher level skills, you really need to do it in, in person on a, on, a, on a physical vehicle using the paint gun or using the welder in order to do things properly. So the practice at home is not going to get them through the program, but maybe I'll let you talk a bit. Yeah. Um, so, I, I mean, a couple of things I could mention, uh, some of the challenges uh, with the students using this type of tool is the initial uh, orientation into the program. Uh, students do need to uh, try it a few times uh, to get comfortable accessing the app as well as um, you know, logging in and figuring out what they're supposed to do first. Uh, another thing is being really clear on what aspect of this training tool we're focusing on. As Brett said, you do need to get your hands on the real thing. Um, there are feedbacks and, and aspects to reality that we simply cannot emulate in VR, but there are some um, 
you know, some parts of it to focus on that can help us train with it. Uh, as far as using this on site, if we are not able to be in the collision shop, we have applied this uh, in a classroom, in a large classroom. And really, you can log in and use this uh, device anywhere, really, uh, in office, uh, at your home, in your backyard, uh, or in a classroom. Um, anywhere where you're not able to be in the collision shop for us is where we utilize this um, and just allow students to put some extra training time in when they can't join us there and do it for real. Thank you very much, Mr. Brett Griffiths and Mr. Keith Mill. And thank you, our participants, for an intriguing question. Now we'll move to the next question. The next question for you is, can you share about general future directions of school to apply virtual reality? How long does it take this headset to be applied widely at universities and colleges in Canada? I think that's a, I think that's a great question. I don't think I have a, a good answer for you, but what I can tell you is that we do have a plan for rolling out additional virtual reality experiences for different programs that we offer here. Um, one such program is we're partnering with a company called Next Tech AR in order to develop a virtual kitchen for our culinary arts program. And we're going to be scanning in a large number of 3D assets. Now that could include pots, pans, mixing devices, all the types of things, knives, everything you might need in order to work in a virtual kitchen. The one of the biggest pieces that has been uh, difficult to manage for us initially is there, there isn't or there aren't a huge number of those types of assets that exist in 3D. So um, we're looking at purchasing two larger scale 3D scanners in order to create a library of 3D objects, which can be um, imported into various platforms and then utilized for an educational experience. So um, ideally, at least from my perspective, and I may not be speaking on behalf of the college, but it would be nice to collaborate with multiple colleges and universities across the country and even maybe the world in order to develop these assets and have them as, a, as an open resource or as a shared resource such that everyone could benefit from a large library. And I think, you know, that's probably, that's probably the best answer at this point. Um, rolling this stuff out is, is, is not an overnight, um, <laughs> it's not an overnight um, um, option. Um, we were very lucky with Skillberry because they had developed this very specific software um, for like uh, automotive painting and welding such that we were able to roll it out quickly. Um, often that isn't the case. We're also, um, VCC works directly with another um, institution here in Vancouver called Vancouver Film School. And we have a partnership with them uh, for a developer program for augmented reality and virtual reality experiences. So some of the grads from that program are developing um, virtual reality and augmented reality um, for students or for companies in order to leverage the, the power and value that this can bring. Thank you very much. And now the next question for you is from our participant from Cambodia regarding the stimulation package. Do you have the detailed course breakdown for the required software and tune as the complete set for this virtual program? Um, so again, I don't. I would just recommend that uh, people connect directly with um, Skillberry. We do have a distributor here in Canada. So if you are purchasing for Canada, I would um, recommend um, that individual and that company. But because, um, sorry, two seconds here. I'm just going to get the link for it. I'll just put it in the chat. And I would, I would recommend connecting directly with them. You can say that, um, you know, you saw us um do a presentation on this software um, using the oculus quest headset and i'm sure they'd be more than happy to help you figure out costs of the licensing for the software as well as the hardware and as i said at least here in canada i don't know about the rest of the world the oculus quest 2 is a very very low cost piece of hardware and then the license cost will vary Thank you very much. And in the chat box, we have one question from our participants. 
have you had any virtual programs for, for practical of life sciences? Um, we don't, but we have, we are working on those types of programs for life sciences. Um, physiology and anatomy are kind of the low hanging fruit for this. Um, and that we're working on developing some of those pieces so students can, can learn anatomy um, rather than going to a morgue or something like that. They can do it in virtual reality and you know, see how those um, different organs and uh, body parts are, are layered within the body. And that is definitely a very big and valuable application of this type of software because you're in a much safer environment and you can also link um, pieces with, you know, just like I could do with a body with a car with anything is I could tie some sort of link or video or piece of information to an organ and give students more information while they're exploring and learning and dissecting a body. Thank you very much, Mr. Brett Briefus and Mr. Keith Mill for the very informative presentation and the Q&A section. Um, so thank you very much for joining live with us on though this is in the evening in Canada. So now everyone, we will have a 10 minutes break after the short break, we will continue with the presentation of Associate Professor Le Van Hao from Vietnam. Please stay tuned with us. Thank you again. Thank you. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It is my pleasure to introduce to you Associate Professor Le Van Hel, Education Quality Assurance Consultant, Secretary of the Accreditation Committee, Center for Education Accreditation, Hang Long, Vietnam. He will deliver a speech about global impacts of COVID-19 pandemic on higher education and implications for Vietnam. Now, please welcome Associate Professor Le Van Hel. Associate Professor Le Van Hel, the floor is yours. Thank you, uh, Ms. Tao. I will share my uh, slide. Have you seen my slide, Ms. Tao? Yes, I see it very clear. Okay, that's good. Okay, we started. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, so uh, we have uh, recently uh, heard a very interesting and practical presentation from uh, Canadian College. Um, and my turn is uh, it's not a very practical one, but uh, I would like to uh, provide you with some information about the global impact of uh, COVID-19 on uh, education. And uh, I suggest some indication for Vietnam. Mm. Uh, thank you, Simeo Retrack, for uh, selecting me as the uh, speaker uh, represent for the Vietnam for this very interesting seminar. Mm. Uh, just a view, a uh, quick view from the uh, presentation. In the presentation, I would like to summarize the key findings of uh, a global survey conducted by UNESCO um, from December 20 to February 21 uh, about the impact of COVID-19 on higher education around the world uh, on different aspects 
access to education, equity and quality of teaching and learning, university operation, national challenges, emerging issue and strategic challenges and chances. And, and based on this finding, I would like to provide some uh, major implication for Vietnam education, uh, high education. And I think that some of implication may be, maybe it's okay, maybe it's good for the uh, country in the region. And I think this indication can be utilized when we make the uh, strategic planning or the action uh, at the state and uh, also the institutional level. And uh, all of this uh, action and planning in order to adapt to the, the impact of COVID-19 and also the long-term development. Mm. So I would like to start with the global survey finding. Uh, in my presentation, is there's some very detailed information, but I don't represent all. And I will leave my file to the organizer so you can uh, uh, assess later for more information. Hmm. Uh, the survey made by UNESCO uh, is made uh, from December uh, 20 to February 21. Uh, and uh, there's um, 65 countries uh, submit the re uh, responses. And among them, uh, they have selected 57 uh, to analyze the data. Mm. And almost half the responses from uh, the high income country and the Europe and North America region. So uh, this is the, um, the first page of the booklet from the, sur uh, the survey of the UNESCO that you can access from the internet. Mm. And uh, this chart, I uh, have you to summarize the, uh, the number and the proportion of the country joined to the survey. So you can see that um, over half of the countries from the high income and upper middle income. Uh, it's a bit, um, sorry about, because it just few country at the low income level join the survey. So the major implication, you can see all information is if come from the high income and upper middle income to country. Mm. So I will um, present the 10 key findings from the survey. Uh, so the first thing is the, the mode of teaching and learning. Mm. So the major impact of the COVID-19, as you can see on the teaching learning is that the increase on the online education. We have seen all of that. Uh, besides that, the hybrid teaching mode is the most uh, popular form uh, mm, among the uh, survey country. So all the responding country report in an increase online uh, and also distant and also hybrid learning. They are all the major trend during the pandemic. Uh, uh, and among the country, over half the country using hybrid mode of teaching and learning, uh, while one third using primary online only, mm, like Vietnam. Mm. Uh, on the graph, uh, I will play on my file so you can uh, read it uh, later. We don't have enough time to analyze all of that. Hmm. The second finding is that university assess. Hmm. So the survey showed that the impact on COVID-19 on enrollment varies by region and income level. Uh, while the high, com high income country and in Europe and North America are better able to cope with disruption, but the rest is not good uh, like the other like this country. So 28 county report no decrease in enrollment. And uh, of the country that report an impact, the 14 from most highly income country and 20 from Europe and North America uh, witness an increase in student enrollment. But why the 14 country others report a decrease 20% or less and uh, six of them at the uh, from the lower middle income country. Mm. Uh, the main reason behind the increase is that the increase of government funding to higher education and the increase of domestic student enrollment. Yeah. It's been that when the pandemic uh, appears, so many students, they cannot go abroad. So the, uh, the, the domestic student enrollment is increased in such country. Mm. And given the restriction of the international mobility, so more and more students are forced to stay in their country and low, in, enroll in local institutions. And from the survey, so that the distant learning opportunity also attract more adult learners to higher education. 
The number three finding is about the international mobility. Mm. So you have, can you see that uh, uh, mobility have suffered uh, a major setback uh, around the world, affecting international students. Mm. But virtual mobility uh, have been compensated or even replaced physical mobility. Mm. So in an effort to prevent the spread of the virus, the international mobility suffer a major setback. So the restriction of the international travel affect the physical mobility of both students and faculty. Uh, this one we have seen in the recent years. Mm. So among the responding country, the average number of inbound and outbound degrees uh, during the last two years, mm. they uh, analyzed at the 17% and 59% respectively. So you can see that uh, just last year, the, uh, the reduction in the uh, inbound and outbound students have decreased very sharply. Um, and the next aspect is that although all students were affected, international students were affected even more than local disadvantages group mm, uh, at observed in many countries. And uh, 23 countries reported that international students were affected while the rest of the responding know that the impact on disadvantaged students uh, is much higher mm, in 19 countries. With the country develop uh, the innovative way to uh, compensate to the lack of physical mobility, they use a digital platform. So the program involving international travel have a shift to digital platform mm. and continue in a hybrid mode in some country. Mm. So this trend shows that the virtual mobility could provide new opportunity for the internationalization of the industry institution. The number four finding about the university staff. So among the country, uh, they, uh, some country revealed that the no impact on the salary of the academic tab with the, in the 38 country. Hmm. But in reality, when we look at in detail of the, uh, the data, the, uh, the country with higher impact on the staff is from the private sector. That's mean the private university or college in such country. The number fifth finding is about the disruption of research and extension activity. So the COVID-19 has caused the suspension and cancellation of teaching and research activity globally, as we can see. So among the survey country, the 41 country report that the research uh, has been suspended or delayed due to the COVID-19 and four countries report determination of research activity. Uh, meanwhile, a other country described COVID-19 as no impact on the national research activity and 15 other country report increase in the research activity but relates to the medicine or the COVID-19 related field. I think this data is very interesting that we can have some more implication later. Mm. And the other aspect is that the until our face-to-face -face activity are limited or delayed, the uh, university have been able to continue providing learning and research opportunity. So uh, new opportunity emerged for seminar, online conferences, like we have today, uh, and also the academic program. Mm. And among the survey country, the rest of the system responding was mostly upper middle and high income country. I mentioned an increase in the existing activity or the immersion of the new activity during the, the pandemic. Mm. The number six finding is about the widening inequality. Mm. So about this aspect, uh, the survey showed a mixed impact on the uh, pandemic, on the university of finance, and uh, he also set line on the exacerbation of the inequality of uh, education. So financial support from government and external sources are crucial to the survival of higher education institution. Mm. So I think it's a very interesting aspect for our system. Mm. And the most country in uh, with the impact the, of the COVID-19 on student enrollment is limited 
are the upper middle and high income country. Uh, and uh, the impact is very on the enrollment across the country with different income level. Mm. And among them, the high income country are better, better cope with the disruption caused by COVID-19 and to maintain or even expand the provision of high education. And about the finance, uh, so uh, at 28 of the responding countries report a reduction of the income from high education, mainly due to the reduced enrollment of the domestic and international students. Number seven, finding about the university operation. So uh, more, almost all the uh, survey university and country report a reduce on campus maintenance and services and campus closure worldwide. Mm. But the higher proportion of the campus closure was reported in the lower middle and the low income country, not the, uh, the high income country. Mm. And moreover, the 70 country reported the closure of the campuses and institution and uh, 11 country among the survey country ensure that the shift to the online learning accommodate reduced online activity and campus closure. Hmm. I think it's very interesting information. And the eighth finding is about the national challenges. Hmm. So based on the survey, we can have an overall view about how the nation um, challenges. And, so how an adaption to new modes of teaching are the primary concern for students and institutions uh, among the survey countries. Mm. And the most important concern for students is the eruption of study, research, and campus activity, followed by financial and, and health. Mm. The nine finding is about the transition from high education to work. So most of the survey country find that the employer now are seeking applicants with advanced technology skill. Hmm. So the COVID-19 has caused significant damage to the global economy, right? And reducing the job opportunity and increasing the unemployment rate. Ah. But 22 country recall reduction in job opportunity and also 18 responding reported an increase in national unemployment. Hmm. Uh, I move to the last finding uh, about the national priority. So, set us up a strategic option for country specific option uh, responses. So, to overcome the challenges caused by the uh, pandemic, so most country report a need to improve the infrastructure and availability of uh, digital devices for online and distance learning, and also significant need for support to help adjust to new virtual modes of teaching and learning, uh, ex, uh, as we can see from the Canadian um, presentation this morning. Mm. And at the global level, 35 countries reported that more international cooperation in research and policy dialogue was on the rewind for universities to overcome the challenges caused by the pandemic. Mm. So uh, that's all the, uh, the, the 10 key findings. So I would like to provide you with a very quick uh, overview. And now I move on to implications that I suggest for Vietnam higher education. And I hope that uh, some of the country in the region can find some education is useful for you. Uh, before of that, I would like to provide very quick context. Mm. Uh, at the global level, we can see that the future of the COVID-19 pand pandemic depends on a lot of unknowns vaccine effectiveness, viral evolution, choice made by government, et cetera. With Vietnam, at the, um, I've updated information this morning. So most city provinces Vietnam are being under the red status hmm, of the COVID-19 pandemic. We define red status as the uh, a province, a city have more than 50 cases uh, at the moment. So you can see at the map of Vietnam, you can see that most of the provinces and cities are in red status. So with this status, most schools and colleges and universities in Vietnam will continue to be closed or operate online if the pandemic cannot be well controlled in, in this year. 
And this number I just uh, updated this early morning. So you see that the, the, the total number of the cases in Vietnam uh, is in the hospital as you have the release of the hospital and the, the death number. Mm. So very in high the number that we are very serious about. Mm. And this graph, so the, uh, the people who receive at least one dose of COVID-19 vaccine, so you can see the Vietnam here. So we have a very low part of the grid. So at the moment, we have received only nearly 80% uh, of the, uh, the, the proportion of people who have at least one dose of COVID-19 vaccine. Mm. Uh, and now we provide some of the indication. Uh, the first thing that's based on the survey information of the World University. So the first thing I uh, see the indication is that university should be redesigned the program learning outcomes and curriculum with a strong focus on the working life skill to adapt to the ongoing change in the labor market. It's been that after or during the uh, pandemic, so the uh, enterprises, the working uh, area will be revised, uh, will require more and more working life for skill for the student. So the working life skill for the student, we have to look in for, uh, that's mean that based on the discipline specific competencies, we have to be more focused on the, what we call the transferable skill including problem solving, soft skills, system thinking, business thinking, technological literacy for all area in higher education. Mm. The second thing is that the improving the equity policies. So we have recognized the uh, inequality uh, for the students around the world, not only in Vietnam. But the first thing is that needs to support from the government in finance tax, it should be crucial to the survival of the private higher education institution. Hmm. The public institution is not very in the very serious state, but especially with the private higher education institution. And the second thing that the student in the remote area need better access to the internet and financial support for education. So the photo I show you here is one of the students in the rural uh, area. They have to use a mobile phone to study uh, a very hard life. Hmm. The number three is the improving remote learning and diversifying the learning modes. So the online and hybrid modes of teaching and learning should be fostered, mm. even when the pandemic is over. Mm. So among the technique and the software, one of the things that I think is very interesting that I think that university should be greatly applied as a ranked classroom model. So this model you can see is that we use the, back, the big data. Uh, so the information from the big data from in education should be landing right to rank landing on the, on the earth. So the information landing for the teachers and the students uh, in the classroom or at home. So they, the teachers can use the data for teaching, the student for the self-study and also for the experiment. And all the data collected to these practices and teaching session collected and then distilling and through it and sending to the cloud uh, and the big data analysis, analyze again, and then learning information again for the, the teaching, uh, for the teachers and the students. So that's the overview of the RAN classroom model. Uh, so now today they have a very uh, good uh, app uh, for this model uh, that we can um, afford for the teaching uh, and the learning. Mm. The number four, I suggest it is improving local and international cooperation in developing online resources, courses, and program. So the first thing I suggest that we should be quickly expanding by the Ministry of Education and Training uh, on the online resources to support teaching and learning at all level of education. At the moment in Vietnam, we have the uh, uh, resource stories uh, managed by the Ministry of Education and Training but uh, mostly used for the, uh, the primary and uh, high school mm, student, uh, not for the university. So I suggest here is that the, we have to open, uh, we have to expand these resources like OpenStack from the Rice University. It's very good source around the world. Mm. 
The second thing in this application is a linking with other institutions for sharing resources and joining teaching. So I provide here with the Texer. Uh, it's a good model for us to learn. Texer means the uh, uh, tertiary education uh, quality and standard of Australia. So Texer uh, collaborate with different university in Australia and other country to develop an online resources. So it's a very good model that we can learn from Australia. Hmm. The third thing is uh, the joining transnational education, very popular today. Hmm. Such network is around the world, for example, with the GHL, the Global MOOC, right? So Global MOOC is the international uh, op um, operation. So any country and university can join it. Mm. So I suggest that uh, each university and colleges who have to looking for the opportunity to join this network. It's very interesting. Mm. And number four is the fostering research and disseminating knowledge and good practices on online and digital teaching and learning to lecturer and, and student. So when we start with the pandemic, uh, many lecturer and student is very uh, um, need to be um, provide information and skill and knowledge about how to teach and how to learn online. So social disseminating practice is very good. So for example, our MIT University have a, a number of workshops that can uh, disseminate uh, the knowledge and good practice and online, digital teaching and learning. Uh, we should foster on this um, activity. The number fifth here is the uh, ICZ higher education program courses and learning outcome can be broken down into smaller unit of learning and granted micro credentials by higher education provider. Uh, and we can establish a consortium of university model uh, to provide and to combine and to cooperate in inventing such a micro credential to our system. And number six here is the virtual mobility should be seen as a new strategy for enrolling local and international new students. Uh, so uh, virtual uh, learning have to be enhanced uh, during and even after the pandemic. So I think all the university to be seen as a new strategy for enrolling uh, our student local and also international. Hmm. And the seven here is uh, we can foster the internationalization at home to attract prospective international students, as well as those Vietnamese students who are now rethinking of study abroad option. So we know that every year before the pandemic, uh, we have a, uh, a thousand, uh, thousand of Vietnamese students study abroad, but now they have to rethink uh, about the that toy. So internationalization at home should be very a very good choice for different universities in Vietnam to attract prospective students. Mm -hmm. Number five implication is if we think the limited fund, uh, we should focus more on practical and innovative research rather than ranking based or publication focusing. Mm -hmm. The first thing is should we design, redesign the institutional research development strategy uh, so the reason I suggest here is that uh, during the recent year, many universities in Vietnam, we have a, a ranking base or publication focus very much. But with the limited funds in the mid pandemic, we should redesign the institutional research and more focus on the uh, innovation. Okay. So what I saw here is the example from the Telcom uh, University in Indonesia. Uh, during the, the 2013, they focused on publication focus line Vietnam nowadays, but then we moved to other direction. So research quality focus, national economic contribution focus, and international economic contribution focus. I think it's a very good lesson for Vietnamese higher education nowadays. Mm -hmm. The second thing is giving priority to COVID-19 related research. So you can see that uh, most of the research uh, focus now today on the world, they uh, fund a lot of money for the, all the research related to COVID-19, not only in medical area, 
on my own so the psychology sociology etc mm. for example on the research in uh, CZ, you can find on the internet mm. the number three here with the uh, expanding innovation system beyond the institution body with the focus on research and development, nationalization, and also internationalization is a, is a model from the China. And it does, it means that uh, when we expand innovation, uh, think about the expanding the border, uh, nationalization uh, and internationalization, hmm. not only we think at the institution. Hmm. The last one I would like to suggest the uh, developing the virtual spaces for connecting different groups of stakeholders. That means students, staff, former student enterprises to support education, research, socialization, and contributions of etc. Uh, what I show you as the uh, example here is from the Nha Trang University. We certainly open uh, a space uh, for the connection between the all the faculty the student and enterprises uh, in every area that relate to the branch on the, the, the fields of the Yatran University. So I think that the such virtual spaces is very good uh, for all of the staff and students during and even after the pandemic. This is a place for the student can socialize, is a place for the enterprises can choose a uh, graduate student from the student and many other uh, activity from these virtual spaces. Um, I have two conclusions from my presentation. The first one is from the Dr. Francisco Mazur, President of Education at the Carter Foundation. It's very interesting. The COVID-19 crisis has been a wake-up call for education globally. So universities need to think about what works and what no longer works. They must learn from the crisis or there will be a terrible waste of opportunity. Mm. And uh, the second conclusion for myself, uh, based on the paper from the Economist paper, do not wait for the end of COVID-19, but soon prepare for a new normal era in higher education. Mm. That's all my presentation today. I'm very happy to hear from my uh, any uh, question that we can exchange. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Associate Professor Le Thong Hao, for your sharing. And our distinguished participants, please type your questions regarding the presentation of Associate Professor Le Thong Hao to the chat box or in the comments on YouTube so that we can pass the questions to our respectful speaker. And now, may I invite Mr. Tekin. May I invite Mr. Tekin, Vice Rector, Royal University of Phnom Penh, Cambodia, to deliver his presentation and tie Royal University of Phnom Penh during COVID-19 pandemic. Please welcome Mr. Tekin. Mr. Tekin, the floor is yours. May I now invite Mr. Tekin from Royal University of Phnom Penh, Cambodia to share the presentation about Royal University of Phnom Penh during COVID-19 pandemic. Hello. Hello, Mr. Tekin. Okay, so you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, um, can, can I share my screen? Yes, of course. Okay.
Um, thank you, uh, Tao, uh, for this um, great opportunity to join as a speaker uh, in this event. Uh, dear uh, distinguished um, uh, participant, uh, let me um, share you um, um, some uh, practices and uh, practicality uh, from uh, Royal University of Phnom Penh uh, uh, during uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic. So um, let me go straight to the uh, agenda today. Um, I will share you a, a brief of uh, um, RUPP of our university, and then um, share you uh, how many partners and with the uh, short video clip uh, of our RUPP and then share the uh, impact of COVID-19 pandemic. Later on, uh, um, uh, I will share about our academic strategy and quality control uh, during the COVID-19. And uh, last of my presentation will sh uh, share with you uh, our um, 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 uh, long-term uh, and future uh, support for um, uh, uh, teaching and learning uh, during the COVID-19. Mm. There are three campuses um, of our university uh, at uh, almost uh, 30 hectares uh, totally. Um, we have um, uh, six faculty, um, a faculty of science, faculty of social science, uh, faculty of Development Study, Faculty of Engineering, Faculty of Education, Institute of Foreign Languages. And uh, there are a lot, um, um, so many uh, departments within each faculty. We also have uh, many centers, uh, including uh, two uh, big centers currently, uh, CJCC and CKCC, which uh, uh, provide the uh, service and uh, culture sharing. That. Um, we have totally uh, almost 900 uh, staff um, and we have uh, 416, uh, uh, sorry, 26 uh, government staff. We have uh, 70 uh, foreign, uh, foreign staff. Um, and totally we have um, PhD uh, um, about 13.7%, uh, uh, including contract, contract staff. Um, at the moment, um, we have a totally uh, 26,000 students, including uh, 11,000 uh, uh, female students. Um, all the level of program. Um, regarding the employment rate, all UPP um, have a 91% employment rate, which most of them are at the various private sectors. And another uh, half almost half a percentage are uh, divided uh, with many area, including uh, government and um, institution. Um, we so far have um, almost 300 MOU from sub-27 country. And we are now also the uh, member of Asian University Network, uh, AUF, GMS, and UMAP as well. Um, our general objective of cooperation with all the partners in the world is that to exchange the faculty member and researchers, um, to join research project, to exchange students between the institution, and also to exchange the information, culture, and publication. 
let me um, share with you uh, a two minute um, brief uh, about our university video. It's the oldest, the largest, one of the best universities in Cambodia. Tens of thousands of local and foreign scholars started their academic journey here where they studied law, economics, medical science, and technology. The university's vast 25 hectare campus contains a large sports field, meeting spaces, and the biggest library in the country. IUPP's vision is to become Cambodia's flagship university in terms of teaching, research, and community service. Almost 20,000 students, some on scholarships and some paying, are studying here this year, and nearly half of them major in science. Since its founding in 1960, up until the Khmer Rouge era, the Royal University of Phnom Penh was a leader among the international universities of Asia. As of 2016, RUPP has collaborated with nearly 200 global universities. Okay, during the, the uh, pandemic uh, um, of COVID-19 outbreak, our leadership um, 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 from uh, our university uh, decided to divide the, um, um, into three terms, short-term, medium, and long-term um, strategy. And uh, during the short-term decision, our um, leader decided to um, allow all the teachers um, um, to use a whatever platform that they can use to engage with their student. Uh, since um, um, the university uh, has been uh, closed um, by the, uh, the ministry. And um, we, uh, during the first stage of COVID-19 outbreak, we also um, have a study um, um, uh, on the, the, the platform and uh, the, the teacher and student uh, used uh, to, to share uh, and engage their teaching and learning, found that 23% um, using Zoom, 22% um, uh, using Google Classroom, and 43% um, uh, using other platform at the first stage. And however, immediately, uh, when the COVID-19 um, uh, start uh, at the beginning of 2020, our uh, top management also decided to form the ICT support team and also uh, uh, structure uh, the implementation to support throughout the university, uh, which um, re each respective user can request support throughout the um, uh, division of the faculty and to the focal point, to the focal, uh, focal point. And then uh, we have the back end support by uh, um, IT assistant to respond to uh, the, the issue that um, uh, each user uh, need support. And during uh, the first start of the COVID-19, we also uh, have smart classroom, which have sharp landing in February, 2020, uh, which is, uh, established by cooperating between OUPP and UNESCO. Uh, and it function is to broadcast the real-time teaching, uh, inner activity of teachers and student pipe interactive poll, 
one teaching machine and LMS and uh, uh, can uh, do the online and blended learning. And also we use this smart classroom to develop the digital uh, course content. And beside the smart classroom during the COVID-19, we immediately established um, more than uh, 10 video conference room, which um, serve for um, uh, uh, meeting for video conference and also serve as the teaching uh, studio for um, um, uh, most teachers. And we also have the big uh, burden as well uh, during the COVID-19 to transform from the physical classroom to the online or distant uh, learning classroom. Uh, this platform require a knowledge, require soft copy so that teacher have to convert their hard copy to the soft copy. And also uh, it is um, the big burden to ICT team to guide, to train staff teacher uh, to use the platform as well. And at the first start, uh, the assessment uh, we did as a hybrid assessment regarding the guideline from the ministry. Um, at the beginning in 2020, we can uh, do the physical assessment um, uh, by uh, following the guideline from the Ministry of Education. Um, but during 2021, uh, when the, the, the breakout um, um, serious and uh, more serious so that uh, we cannot uh, make uh, any uh, physical assessment anymore so that uh, uh, fully online uh, uh, for teaching and learning and assessment as well. Um, as our implementation um, on the way, uh, we also um, uh, did a survey and found that um, there are 39% of students using smartphone to engage their study, 13% using the PC, and 48% using both uh, uh, PC and smartphone. Currently, um, all UPP um, can uh, implement our medium term, which 90% uh, of teachers can use uh, the same platform as Microsoft Team, which provided by our university, that uh, teacher, staff, and student have to have the all UPP with our domain, allupp.edu.kh. And our ICT support team uh, got more burden to create a university email and support uh, the email issue and flaps form uh, to uh, those um, users. However, uh, the, another challenge is that the lab, especially the physical lab. Uh, during the COVID-19, we decided to and encourage all the physical lab teacher to use the virtual lab. This is an example of virtual lab that teachers have to use to student to interact with this platform to practice the formulation. Here, let me share a short video uh, about the uh, practices uh, uh, on the chemistry uh, virtual lab.
Okay, for the long-term economic strategy and uh, quality control, Mr. Chovey is here, um, um, a director of uh, um, uh, Quality Assurance Office, uh, our colleague from RUPP, uh, will um, um, share with uh, uh, this uh, strategy. Um, Mr. Chowee, are you here? Yes, I am here. Thank you, okay. Mr. Yeah, yeah. Varakas again. Okay, yeah. so it's a very good morning and uh, dear distinctive guests. Uh, my name is Chowee. Yeah, I'm in charge of the quality assurance. Have you learned from my uh, directors about the challenges and the impact of uh, COVID-19? And we can see that uh, the most challenges is about uh, physical lab, which is required a student to, uh, 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 to operate on those kinds of experiments. But uh, the university try to manage those kind of virtual, this one like uh, uh, set the thing which is uh, almost comparable or, or similar to what they are doing in the, the physical classroom. So as a part of uh, uh, quality control and quality management at the universities, uh, we mainly involve with our uh, uh, top management in order uh, to deal with this kind of uh, uh, operation and to keep it working smooth, uh, smoothly. So uh, we found the challenges with our operation online tool is about the technical support and uh, the knowledge of staff and students. And uh, it requires a lot of capacity buildings and uh, we need all informa information sharing amongst our college and uh, uh, from uh, the partner as well. So in order to, to make this go smoothly, we also uh, uh, create, uh, uh, develop a, a plan. Uh, Mr. Rectors, Rectors, would you please move to the next slides? Okay. Um, so we also develop a, a, a long 10-year uh, strategic plan and a five-year strategic plan in order. Uh, can you move to the next slide, please? Yeah, okay. So uh, we have to, to uh, develop this kind of uh, strategies and a strategic plan in order to meet the Royal Company of Government's vision about uh, 2030, which we wish to become a high medium income countries. And as a part of uh, uh, the nation, we provide human resources to the country. We very focus on those kind of qualified output uh, in order to serve our economy. So this kind of uh, strategic plan require uh, 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 the staff upgrading skill and we require uh, new uh, knowledge or we can say innovation. And then in this to make it in line with those kind of plan as a quality uh, management area, we have to uh, uh, observe or monitor the uh, classroom management. We monitor the operation tool, and then we conduct uh, a survey and tracer study in order to find out whether our graduate have met their uh, expected uh, uh, outcomes, whether they satisfy with uh, what they are working with us on the uh, platform, and as you see what, from, uh, what my uh, director presented, we very satisfied with our student outcomes that they can get a job about 91%. And uh, they also use the skill they learn from the university. But as a previous presenter presented those kind of uh, the challenges, we are uh, almost the same thing with uh, the lack of uh, infrastructure or the knowledge, something like that one. As a part of uh, quality control, we uh, work closely or uh, to the uh, uh, assessing the, the method the, the instructor use in the classroom. Uh, we look at their assessment uh, method and uh, and uh, another thing like uh, 
the uh, process which they operate with those in order to meet their learning outcomes. So as uh, we can see from the hybrid assessment, then we can we we have to change uh, the assessment uh, uh, criteria. For example, uh, teacher need uh, to collect all the portfolio for the student in order to assess. Since we are far, so they can send the source to our uh, thing. And then based on this platform, we also can observe uh, how uh, our teacher operate on those kind of platform and uh, uh, what the signal of uh, uh, Wi-Fi device appear or connect to our uh, uh, learner or student who are starting from the remote area. So I think at this part, I, I would give the floor to my uh, directors to uh, tell you more about uh, how we manage those kind of uh, 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 online control, yeah. Thank you, yeah. Mr. Chobi. Yeah, okay, let, let me um, share as well um, re regarding the, the quality control, the monitoring on the platform they are using is one of the important um, uh, factor. So that this um, uh, from uh, Microsoft team, um, uh, we, can, we can see uh, how many user is actively using our platform and we can see how many meetings are organized in the last uh, uh, 30 days and so on and so forth. Uh, uh, like on this slide, uh, there are uh, 25,000 um, uh, active users are using uh, our platform. And from this, um, uh, we can also see uh, from the uh, our platform, we can also see how many uh, users use Android, how many users are using uh, Windows. Uh, uh, like on this slide, um, uh, almost uh, 12 k uh, using Android and uh, more than 10 k using um, uh, uh, PC with Windows and uh, almost 10 k using uh, iOS and a few of them use Mac and, and Web. And from this platform, we can also uh, see that uh, each teacher um, uh, provide uh, uh, their lecturer on uh, the, the real time uh, online. Um, and we can see how many students join uh, his or her session and uh, what time they, um, they start and, um, and how long uh, the session ends, something like that. And we can see um, how good uh, quality internet connection from each user uh, for um, uh, uh, um, uh, this, um, we can see even the detail uh, from uh, each um, uh, uh, user, even the teacher, uh, him or herself. Um, the, the, the graphic show uh, red line that mean a poor quality. So that um, uh, most of them show that uh, uh, dear uh, audio quality are good. Um, so far, we we just used uh, last month uh, to, you know, um, this is um, our first time, and uh, we at the same time we are doing we also learning from the problem, and we use uh, Microsoft Team and Microsoft Form together to control and manage the uh, exit examination. And um, uh, we divided into um, a three point. Uh, so uh, we also have, you know, create a committee uh, like the guideline from the ministry and uh, what should we do uh, pre-examination, during examination and post-examination. For example, pre-examination, uh, individual um, teacher uh, who uh, issue the uh, uh, exam question must be protected by password uh, and sent to the faculty and the faculty sent to the com committee um, so that during the examination, uh, they can start uh, uh, by providing the uh, exam question with uh, the password and student can start the examination and um, uh, the post examination, the committee 
also managed to uh, combine with the uh, uh, password to uh, provide to the corrector. And uh, this is the real-time monitoring. The central committee have to uh, sit together and um, um, uh, monitor uh, all uh, examination uh, classroom. Um, let me share uh, with you uh, about uh, the infrastructure to support uh, the long term, even um, um, uh, the COVID-19 uh, end. But I think that this is the opportunity uh, beside the challenge that uh, all teachers, students and staff can start uh, uh, faster using the platform for uh, the engagement and communication as well. However, um, the platform uh, we are using is just, um, uh, the cloud and uh, provided with uh, a third party. So we have to have our own data center, ICT infrastructure uh, must be uh, there at our university to connect all campuses and to um, to be uh, able to provide service to staff and students uh, by our campus network. And um, uh, we uh, should have our own uh, network operation uh, center as well, uh, even without an internet uh, connection. So uh, we are on the way. Um, uh, now we already uh, design uh, at a design stage and we hopefully all the campuses will be connected. All building will be connected and um, uh, 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 half uh, 2022. Uh, um, um, this is our work uh, have been uh, studied and done during the COVID-19 and uh, uh, our plan to connect uh, all our campuses. And this is a data uh, center uh, that uh, we already uh, studied the specification um, and we uh, final now it is on the way uh, 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 for the international procurement uh, uh, for all the equipment uh, to equip at our university. And uh, we already uh, have uh, our final draft of uh, our ICT uh, infrastructure blueprint that will be uh, 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 submit to uh, get the endorsement from from a rector and our board of, of, of trustee uh, uh, soon. Um, this is uh, coming to my end. Thank you for um, your uh, uh, attention. Um, um, you can uh, have a question and uh, Mr. Chobi here regarding the quality. He can uh, help me to respond to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Tekin, Vice Rector of Royal University of Phnom Penh, and Mr. Wong Chofi, Director of Quality Assurance Office from Royal University of Phnom Penh, Cambodia, for the very informative presentation. Uh, and if you have any questions regarding the presentations of Mr. Tekin and Mr. Chofi Wong, please type your questions in the chat box or in the comments on YouTube. And now from the Philippines, I'm very delighted to invite Dr. Tish and Bernard, Head Planning and Quality Management Assurance, St. Paul Quality, St. Paul University, Dumaguete, Philippines, to deliver her presentation, Evolving Breakthroughs Amidst Uncertainty, the SBUD Way. Now, Dr. Tish and Benar, the floor is yours. Hello, good morning. Can you hear me clearly? Yes. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I think I sent ahead my pre-recorded video. Could, uh, could, may I ask you to please play it for me or for everyone? Thank you. 
Yes, thank you, Dr. Tish and Banar. And now we will listen to the presentation from Dr. Tish and Banar from Philippines. A blessed morning to all of us here. Shall I say, Sin Chao, everyone. Firstly, I'd like to thank Sir Mayor Richard for this wonderful opportunity to be able to share a bit of St. Paul University, Dumaguete. That is our school in the Philippines. It is indeed very wonderful to be part of this session together with the respectable speakers who are leaders too. And we'll talk about good models in leadership, especially in these trying times of our educational system. My talk, by the way, centers around the evolving breakthroughs amidst uncertainty in the context of St. Paul University to Maguete. Let me give you a brief rationale first. The recent outbreak brought by the coronavirus pandemic on January 30, 2020, most if not several establishments like in both in the industry and the academe are enormously affected and preventive measures were imposed by the Philippine government in people areas such as in malls, hotels, in restaurants, in ports, in airports, and schools. So this sudden emergence of the pandemic has brought impact on all facets of everyone's lives. So here's what happened in our context. By observing the measures mandated by the government in Negros Oriental, St. Paul University suspended its classes on March 13, 2020, where an approximation of 50% of the lesson coverage was not yet completed by most of the teachers. The circumstance entails a great deal of careful planning that requires all the academic team members and teachers to meet and come up with a blended learning plan to utilize or to be utilized for the remaining lessons. So with a level of uncertainty around the length of duration of social distancing brought by COVID-19, schools in our area temporarily closed and the face-to-face -face instruction was abruptly modified into online learning. However, this transition has carried several questions and doubts as regards schools, teachers, and students' readiness, and the impact of this to learning despite the positive claims brought by the online education. So although we were able to shift from face-to-face -to, -face to online learning. However, there is a need to assess this online class skin in order to know the objective feedback of the students and how the university can make changes or improvement. There were a group of faculty members who conducted an assessment on the online learning class, and these are the following results. So it showed that it showed a fair access and use of technology and this would probably imply that students really do not have an absolute clutch over the access and use of technology. And aside from that, it was also emphasized in the result that access to the internet connection marks the primary difficulty of the students in participating in online class. And when it comes to the level of skill or knowledge required to complete the online class, it would imply that learning takes place only when instructions are completely given by the teachers with good facilitation. And with that findings, so the abrupt shift from F to F or face to face to online learning has indeed marked a challenging trail of accessibility and pedagogy where internet accessibility greatly affects the instructional delivery of the teachers. Aside from the quantitative findings, there were also significant findings in the qualitative results. All right, so there are uh, very important themes that were found out in the responses of the students, and these are the learning outcomes, the teaching learning activities, educational technology resources, we have the assessment procedures, and most importantly, the values that they learned during the pandemic, okay, while having that online class. Well, when it comes to learning outcomes, this is a very important part of the uh, plan because it is uh, the foundation of the teaching since these TLAs are designed through the expectations on what the students need to achieve throughout the course, okay? So there should be clarity of instruction, all right? So it should, uh, 
be clear to the students because it would help them accomplish their task successfully. Okay. Another thing is on TLAs, or we call that the teaching learning activities that promote learning to learn in which students manifest responsibility in their own learning. Okay. So teachers then offer sufficient opportunities to support students learning during the crisis. And in terms of educational technology, well, in the quantitative result, it was noted that internet access is the most uh, difficult, okay, difficult part in having the online class. So technology is integral to achieving significant improvements in both teaching and learning. However, this is considered a challenge for most teachers because some may not be prepared yet right so the good thing though is that teachers were very resourceful and they would be able to uh get some ed tech tools from helpful websites also and uh, on the assessment procedures this one is the most challenging part you know, of the continuum because um teachers even up, up to this time, is still trying to look for appropriate assessment procedures that they can employ in their classes, especially that the modality is different now. It's not, um, it's the assessment uh, task is not done face to face, it's online, right? So it entails a lot of factors when doing an assessment procedure. And most importantly is the values learned by the students. It is interesting then to know that learning, despite the pandemic, students get to recognize the values they have learned from their experience. And that is the very good thing that, uh, that was shared by the students in their responses. So after knowing the findings of the study, SPUD right away came up with some breakthroughs, right? So that's, these are the things that I would like to share with you today. I would like to present these breakthroughs with this framework, okay? So we call it the RISE framework, which stands for recovery, ingenuities, for sustainable education. This is common, a common framework you see in the internet, but this is adapted in this particular context. All the major breakthroughs that we have are encapsulated in this framework. And now I am presenting to you the center core of the framework. So the center core are the university's KRAs, key result areas, that centers on the institutional core, Okay. that refers to the formation of all stakeholders. We have spiritual, personal, and professional development. Okay. And we also have the academics and instructional core in which all the initiatives pertaining to curriculum designing, curriculum development, learning plan design are centered. And we also have a KRA on innovations or advancements aiming to provide value innovative programs and the last core which is the administrative core is centered on the unification for sustainable management system now i'd like to present to you other frameworks that we're adapting to contextualize some of the breakthroughs that we have in saint paul university dumaguete these initiatives are centered on different attributes starting off with being conscious because SPUD remains to be visionary, we continue to live our vision and mission anchored on our very own education ministry, and we call that St. Paul of Shards Education Ministry. From there, the strategies are cascaded into all the different SPC universities. Then as an institution, we came up with our initiatives in the institutional level, then down to the departmental level. And most importantly is that there is an individual ownership among us where we create a culture of accountability and ownership of the task so that it can be accomplished successfully. And now uh, I'd like to present to you the second attribute, and that is by being creative. So with that, St. Paul University Dumaguete also established 
a certain platform, and we call that the Polinian Blended Learning Platform. So this is St. Paul University Dumaguete's outcomes-based distance learning platform. It is a holistic and value-laden teaching and learning approach, essentially provides interactive modalities that help shape a Polinian mind, hand, and heart. A platform that is simple, active, and warm. It is designed to be learner-centered, flexible, proactive, interactive, and of course, engaging. Now I am showing to you the PBL modalities framework. So if you notice, it is composed of two parts there. You have the pulsing and the Paul flex. So let me give you a brief uh, description first of the PBL. This is both for synchronous online and or asynchronous or the blended modes. It is specially tailored from student specific needs through the use of PulseSync, as mentioned earlier. PulseSync is a synchronous modality of the Polynian Blended Learning Platform where learning engagements happen online in a specific virtual environment using the Microsoft Teams and Moodle for the higher education and Schoology and Microsoft Teams for the basic education as online mediums. All right, so for Paul Flex, you have there, that is an asynchronous modality of the Polynesian Blended Learning where learning engagements happen offline and in a self-paced time frame. Okay, and when we talk about fall, fall flex, there are two forms there. We have Paulinian thumb, okay, the Paulinian thumb that is a blended learning modality in an offline environment where instructional materials include self-guided lessons, modules, video, content, virtual or virtual libraries, posted lecture notes, and are given in a digital form using the OTG or the USB flash drive. And we also have the Polinian packet, which is a blended learning modality in an offline still environment where instructional materials include self-guided lesson modules, lecture notes, work text, worksheets are given in printed form. And so I am now going to share with you another breakthrough still under the creative attribute. So this is our equal instructional design. We still adapted this framework to contextualize our equal design. And this is the PBL, um, Transformative Outcomes Based Education of the University, where the learner is the center of the teaching and learning process, of course. From the four principles of OBE, we have the clarity of focus, design down, expanded opportunity, all right? So several learning approaches were delivered or derived. This model is designed to address the continuous learning and formation of students outside the physical classroom and beyond the face-to-face -face mode of teaching. Interesting attribute that is competence and compassion. I'd like to show you the new normal learning continuity organizational chart of SPUD. This is under the Vice President for Academic Affairs. So there are several functions here. I'd like to share with you some of these um, functions and responsibilities. So for curriculum design and instructional delivery or the CDID lead and team members, they are responsible for the crafting of the assessment instruments. So that is in order to determine the educational needs and analyzes the results of the assessment to guide the school in identifying where the majority of their learners, teachers, and parents are and their current financial, material, and human resource capacities of the school. And for the PSI, or we call that the Paradigm Shift and Innovators Team, they coordinate with other PBL ad hoc teams and assist as the school and its personnel, okay? And then in the, also assist in the transition to the new normal approaches and even in the post-pandemic time. So that is the uh, role or responsibility 
of the PSI or the Paradigm Shift and Innovators Team. The PBL and the CDID team, they coordinate with the trainer's training team and new normal navigate, navigator's coach. So this is to provide necessary webinars for faculty, teachers, parents, and students as it becomes available. And they also are responsible for the planning and the proposing of innovative approaches to teaching and assessment strategies that are abreast with the needs of time and fit among our stakeholders' needs and capabilities. And for the, we have another function here, that's the trainer's training team. So what could be the functions of the trainer's training team? Well, they are the ones leading all the technological trainings in the implementation of the PBL ID. Okay. They coordinate also with the new normal navigators coach for the updates. Okay. And so therefore, the functions of the new normal navigators coach, they are responsible for the navigation of the new normal procedures to all departments. And also, they maintain constant update on the current changes in the teaching platforms and ensure that all departments have the same understanding on the implementation of the new normal procedures. Okay, so how about the new normal tech support? So what could be their functions then? So they ensure that, or ensure the technological support of or for high quality instruction, ready to help and teach teachers and school staff in their technological difficulties as they carry on their day-to-day so that's the uh, function or those are the functions of the NN tech support. Okay. And we also have here the new normal bodies. Okay. Who are these new normal bodies? So these are the teacher and student volunteers who help facilitate in the trainings or tutorials given to those freshies in the university. So these are all the functions of the new normal learning continuity organizational chart. This is referring to the continuous quality improvement of the university. So St. Paul Dumaguete management team reviews the quality management system twice a year to ensure the continuing suitability and effectiveness in satisfying the requirements of the ISO 9001-2015. So in this management review activities. These are the following information that are uh, the subject for review. We have the follow-up actions from previous management reviews. Uh, we discuss the results of quality audits, the internal quality management system audits, external quality management system audits, customer satisfaction needs, and I mean results, the regulatory audits of course, coming from the regulatory bodies such as the Commission on Higher Education. We have from the Department of Education, okay, customer feedback such as customer surveys, customer complaints, and customer suggestions. And we also review the attainment and trend of quality objectives, result of the supplier's evaluation, the effectiveness of operational controls to address risk, all right? that is effective of action plans or effectiveness of action plans and programs to address opportunities, the status of corrective actions, changes in external and internal issues that could affect the quality management system. And so, in conclusion, I'd like to go back to this framework. That is the RISE framework of St. Paul de Maguete. It is indeed inevitable that crises are happening. They are real. What is important is that for every school to be mindful, they should be flexible and resilient so that it will keep us move forward and go on rising again and again, right? So before I end my sharing, I would like to acknowledge the efforts of the Academic Affairs Division headed by our Vice President for Academic Affairs, Sister Helen Malubay, SPC, and of course, with the constant support of our university president, Sister Joseline La Sala, SBC, for initiating all these initiatives. As one Polinian community, we take 
part in the implementation of the initiatives. Thank you very much. Allow me to show you this short video clip. Blessed morning to all of us here, shall I say, Xin Chao, everyone. Firstly, I'd like Thank you very much, Dr. Tish and Anar. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to have the Q&A section regarding the presentations of Associate Professor Le Van Hel, Mr. Tekin, and Dr. Tish and Anar. If you have any queries, please type them in the chat box or in the comment section on YouTube. Our team will collect and pass related questions to the respective speakers. Thank you very much. And now, please wait for us for one minute to collect the questions. Thank you very much, our distinguished participants. And now, dear Associate Professor Levan Hell, the first question for you is, does the Vietnamese government initiate any project to provide equal accessibility of online education to all students in the whole country? What is the extent of online education of Vietnam during this pandemic? Are there any challenges for the government to promote online education during the pandemic? Thank you, Ms. Tao. So uh, I break on your question and uh, I think as most of you is very concerned about the how the government and how Vietnam uh, deal with the difficulties for online education, especially with the disadvantaged student. Um, among the participants uh, today, uh, I know that uh, some of my colleagues work in the um, education ministry or in charge of the policy at the state level. So uh, you can provide some other information that I don't know very well. Uh, but to my view, I can have a few words, something like this. Uh, at the moment, uh, you know that the our government and also the own the provinces, we have to focus on most of our resources to overcome the pandemic. So at the moment, we don't have much uh, resource to deal with the education um, requirements for online education. But before the pandemic, I see that the government have prepared uh, some policy and some kind of infrastructure to support on the provinces to prepare for the online education. Uh, for example, on uh, I remember on this April, the government have a very important policy that's uh, assigned to its local government have to assure the technical infrastructure for the online education for all the school in each province. Uh, so I think it's a very important policy. And the Ministry of Education and Training also have the policy on the how the program 
um, should run an online education in the future. For example, at the moment, even after the pandemic, the Ministry of Education Training uh, accept the maximum of 30% of time for bachelor education program to use online education. And in special cases, for example, like uh, present, the university can improve uh, the percentage of online courses, online time for the program. Mm. Uh, so that's the, some of the, the, the regulation I know at the moment. And look around the country, uh, I check on the internet and I see a very different uh, solution from different provinces. Uh, for example, in Da Nang uh, city, they have decided to have a tuition wave for all the school students. Mm, that's very good. And I think the other uh, city, for example, Ho Chi Minh City, they also suggest that to have to be a tuition wave or tuition reduction for all high school students and even university students. Uh, at the uh, institutional level, before the pandemic, I observed that most of the university have prepared, have a very good preparation for the, this, the moving uh, uh, from the traditional teaching and learning to online by providing for the staff and students with the very many training courses. Yeah. So before the pandemic uh, today, so I believe that most of staff um, and students have a basic knowledge and skill that can, they can, can join to the online education. And during the pandemic, I learned that some universities have a very special policy to support. For example, the uh, Hanoi Polytechnic uh, University, they have to uh, give this uh, vendor student with the laptop. Uh, some of the university, for example, the Nha Trang University, where I place working, they, the, the, the university provide some uh, scholarship uh, that the student can get it to buy the internet um, budget, or also they buy the laptop uh, and reduce the tuition fee. Uh, it's very popular in different university. And uh, I think that uh, to solve this problem, Vietnam, we need more discussion about this. It is a big question and it's a big problem we have to face after the pandemic. And I think that the, uh, the, the enterprises, uh, the company, the industry, have to collaborate with the, all the college and university and even school eh, to solve the, the big problem of the whole country. Mm. So at the moment, I can provide some information and my own idea about this. Thank you. Mm. Thank you very much, Associate Professor Hao, for your sharing. And now the next question for you is, do not wait for the end of COVID-19, but soon to repair for new normal era in higher education. What do you think about infrastructure facility for all teaching and learning due to many students have no or not enough learning facility? Uh, thank you, Thao. As I mentioned before, uh, if your question mentioned about the uh, the school level or university level, I don't know exactly, but I mentioned about the uh, the infrastructure facility for online learning. Uh, the government has assigned the uh, responsibility to the local government. They have to uh, earn, to guarantee about the, the the provision of the internet uh, facility for the student. It is local. Uh, province uh, and at the, uh, the, the it's, uh, university level as I mentioned before at the moment I recognize that different university have a different solution for such a problem mm. for example Hanoi Technical University provide laptop for this advantage student or most of the university provide training courses for staff and students. I think that's the, at the, the moment, as my answer for such a question. Hmm. Thank you. And now may I move to the next question? 
So dear Associate Professor Le Van Hel, could you please share with us the instrument used in this global survey and the findings? Uh, okay, sure. As I show you in my presentation, the, uh, the first page of the book that uh, made by UNESCO, so you can easily find it uh, from the internet. And we think that Budlet, they include the instrument they have and very detailed uh, analysis about the information they got through the survey. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Uh, thank you, Associate Professor Hao. And now the next question for you is, how do we help higher education students with difficulty in digital or online learning modality to optimize modular learning modality during pandemic? Okay, thank you. It's uh, almost the same with the, the previous question, but uh, I would like to say in more detail. Um, I would like to talk about the, in the context of one university I'm working is Yang Trang University, but I think it's similar to other universities in Vietnam. Uh, at the moment, we have developed the, uh, the learning management system that uh, can help the teachers and students, not only within the, uh, during the pandemic, but also later. Uh, and we have to provide uh, so many training courses that uh, at the moment, the teachers and students working very well with the learning management system. And I think that it's very good for all of them, uh, all of us to move and to work together, even after the, the pandemic. Mm. And with the student with difficulties in online learning, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, some university provide facility uh, or provide uh, tuition fee reduction for them that can okay, afford the, uh, the, the uh, university education. Mm. And uh, during the pandemic, um, some of the university have met had the problem with the examination, online examination. Uh, some have overcome by different techniques and some university have to wait until the pandemic is over that we can get the student for the some very special exam or for laboratory work, something like that. Mm. Thank you very much, Associate Professor Le Van Hel. And now I may invite Mr. Takian and Mr. Chovy Vond from Cambodia to answer the questions. So the next question is, during the COVID-19 pandemic, we have more and more barriers to teaching for students in disadvantaged areas. What are the best ways to help them in studying in this time? Okay, um, thank you for the question. And um, let me start uh, answering this question. And uh, Mr. Wong Shaw, we will uh, uh, add if I uh, may something. Um, um, regarding our uh, best practices, um, yeah, for sure, uh, when the university is closed, uh, so that uh, all the university students um, uh, go back uh, to uh, uh, their province, uh, to their uh, district and however uh, some um, some area uh, and it's not uh, uh, good to have the you know like the internet connection um, something like that so that uh, Royal University Phnom Penh also uh, uh, have um, uh, um, support uh, from the uh, HIP uh, project to support you, you know the, the student that um, that uh, we can say the, the poor student and uh, at the rural area uh, to support the, the internet course so that they can come to the city uh, near uh, to uh, the place and rent the house and uh, have the better internet connection so that they can um, uh, connect uh, to the online course uh, uh, then uh, and real time. And uh, however, some of them uh, still have difficulty to, to join uh, the, the real-time uh, uh, teaching course, but they can, however, um, uh, the offline, that the teacher can share the core material uh, through uh, the platform. 
they can download uh, and they can bring it out. Uh, uh, this is our uh, best practices uh, for the poor student or the rural area um, student places. And uh, uh, Mr. Wong uh, uh, you can add if I, I miss uh, something on this regard. Thank you, Mr. Directors. Um, actually, uh, uh, we were a little bit shocked when uh, the COVID uh, spread out and uh, come to our uh, countries. And uh, suddenly the government asked all the, the services to be uh, this delay. And our students a little bit uh, 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 chaos. They don't know what to do. And we also uh, waiting for the government policy. Uh, if we can uh, do anything with uh, the process of learnings and However, the university have a, a channel for student communication. So when we got the green light from the government uh, to allow us to uh, connect to the student and uh, we communicate with the student through our uh, uh, channel, what is uh, the well-known here is a telegram channels where we can upload those kind of information or student can download or sharing the screen with this. So as you can see from our the survey, the majority of students have a, a mobile phone and PC, and then they can uh, communicate with us. As uh, my uh, Mr. Director mentioned about the, the mechanism to connect with the students. So it, the best way is to support them through the, our existing channel. So that one is from my part, thank you. Thank you very much. And now we we'll move to the next question. The next question for Mr. Tuckin and Mr. Chovingborn is, in the universities and colleges, we need to deliver practical skills like medicine universities or technical colleges. It will be so much harder for them to apply virtual classes, especially for evaluation and assessment to examine the students for their practical skills. What kinds of assessment methods could your university prepare to use for the coming semester? Okay, thank you for a very good question. Um, um, this is um, um, our big concern at the be beginning, especially uh, uh, this year, 2021. Um, we um, just um, um, stopped uh, a while uh, at the beginning. Uh, uh, while we are uh, um, uh, doing uh, the uh, uh, um, searching and um, um, have uh, a series of uh, meeting with the technical uh, um, and researcher um, to start uh, especially uh, like I stated in the presentation, especially the challenges with the um, um, uh, physical lab, uh, the lab that, that need to, to see and touch something like that, uh, like for example, Medicine University, um, our university here is bioengineering, for example. Um, it's hard um, to, you know, to engage student uh, using the physical lab uh, so that um, our teacher um, um, and finally decided um, to use the uh, uh, platform uh, for uh, virtual um, uh, lab uh, instead of a, a physical one. Um, like I show in the presentation and uh, the platform is free, yeah. Uh, the platform uh, is free uh, for uh, the teacher and student. Um, so that um, um, on this semester, we use this platform uh, for the physical lab. Uh, and for the assessment, uh, after we, 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 we have the experiences uh, uh, using Microsoft Team and Microsoft Form to manage and control the assessment uh, so that the, in the future, so the next semester, we will continue use this uh, platform. However, we, we, we have uh, two, uh, two uh, uh, keys of study. 
Um, and here we have the uh, Microsoft team and Microsoft form from uh, uh, Microsoft Office uh, 365 uh, provide uh, uh, freely by uh, Microsoft company uh, that we have uh, our university can use a full feature and and um, um, another uh, faculty called Institute of Foreign Languages. We also uh, pay for the tool that called Speed Exam. Uh, in this case, uh, we um, we found that um, students have to have uh, two devices uh, when they uh, are doing the examination. One is for the uh, uh, exam question uh, activity and one for uh, you know for capture the the the, the picture and and their uh, activity and this tool will uh, uh, will uh, stop uh, will retreat uh, if uh, the student activity uh, like uh, they um, 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 move their eye um, uh, to add it, the other side, something like that, so that the tool will will uh, warn and uh, even uh, retreat uh, the, the 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 exam taker uh, from the examination as well. Um, but uh, this we have to uh, spend uh, some for for the tool. Uh, for the next semester, we we'll, we we will move to Microsoft Team. Uh, 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 together, and we uh, we can uh, you know um, control uh, by the real uh, time as uh, I uh, show in presentation. Okay, this is uh, 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 from my uh, answer. Um, if Bung um, we have uh, some more, please add. Yes, I just want to add a little bit to what uh, you have just mentioned to the the the, platform or the virtual meeting. Um, you know that the lack of uh, student engagement in a physical classroom is very hard for uh, our uh, student. Sorry, for our staff and uh, especially for the quality uh, control or quality uh, measurements. So uh, we try to focus more on the. Uh, formative assessment rather than uh, uh, summative assessment. So the student have to do uh, many cases, for example, they have to study the case and uh, writing the report instead of uh, uh, doing what uh, they do in the classroom, something like that one. So that's what, what I want to add. And what we concern is about the uh, assessment reliability. So uh, that one is uh, that we be concerned and especially for uh, the student in the uh, disadvantages area or, or sometimes it, it affects the student in the block down area which they are not able to leave their uh, accommodation to do the case or study. But uh, we sometimes can uh, extend the deadline for those kind of uh, student work. So that's what we have done so far. Thank you very much. Okay, and I want also to add uh, uh, one more thing that uh, uh, we use the uh, Microsoft team uh, to control um, the assessment. Um, from, from the central admin, we as you, 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 you could see from my presentation, um, we, we give, um, we provide the, the limited period for um, the uh, exam taker. Um, and then uh, uh, the exam taker uh, uh, will have no any excuse or reason about the internet connection since we can see from the system um, uh, 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 how good uh, the internet connection uh, currently is so that they cannot say oh I cannot upload no I cannot send because the pool of internet something like that uh, because our system can see uh, 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 from the platform yeah Thank you. That's all. Thank you problem. very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Tekin and Mr. Chovy Vond. Dear participants, due to the time constraints, I am afraid that we only have time for one more question. 
So we'll move to the last question. And this question, our participant from Thailand would like to direct it to Mr. Tekin and Dr. Tish and Benar. How does your university tackle the issue of academic dishonesty, cheating during exam for assessment conducted live online? Okay. So um, may I invite Mr. Tekin? Uh, yeah, um, thank you. Um, this is uh, also uh, the, another good question that uh, that is um, our uh, concern that we are doing to solve this problem uh, uh, now. Uh, actually, as our best practices uh, using Microsoft Team and Microsoft Form to do the examination, as uh, Mr. Chobi stated as well, uh, we we um, uh, we just finished last month, um, 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 early uh, this month, sorry, early this month, about the exit examination. It is about uh, okay, more than uh, more than three thousand uh, candidate uh, to take the exit exam. So uh, we, in order to um, you know to uh, control, so that um, our top management decided to uh, with the open question so that we don't have um, to have a you know a series on the uh, process um, but we, the open question is that uh, student can open book um, and uh, what we want is only uh, the student can apply the formula and then they can uh, answer and send uh, through the platform uh, to us. However, we we can see a few students who have uh, copy yeah, uh, from from each other and uh, send their answer to to our system. Um, um, so that this is we give the ownership to the faculty um, and uh, whether they uh, redact the uh, score in order to you know, to uh, um, uh, uh, get it easier to control uh, the examination uh, uh, next time and uh, uh, continue uh, online uh, engagement as well. Uh, here, uh, so far, we are thinking about uh, this issue for the real-time or live examination uh, online, which we are doing the the, 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 the the live monitoring, uh, for example, like I stated uh, during the previous question about the uh, camera uh, to uh, the uh, student or candidate have to stay uh, in front of the camera and uh, answer with the limited time uh, of uh, a question provided um, um, so that uh, this uh, I don't think this uh, can uh, can solve the whole issue, but uh, uh, only the the, 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 the the solution that uh, can see uh, the, the, the student real activity uh, during the examination time. Uh, uh, I don't know if I, I, I answer uh, the question. Yes. Yeah, you thank think, you very uh, much. So Yes, so may I invite Dr. Joby Vaughn to share your experiences. So uh, I just want to add to uh, 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 my directors about this one, as you know that he already uh, include all those kind of things, but as part of our learning outcome, one of them is uh, attitude, uh, promote attitude. So we mainly focus on this one. So, uh, but we cannot guarantee if 100% is uh, uh, correct, but uh, uh, reliability is very important from the student. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now may I hear the sharing from Dr. Tish and Bernard for this question. All right, so thank you very much for this uh, very interesting question. I think uh, this is really the most, um, the, the dilemma of, of most of the universities, you know, how to deal with academic dishonesty. Of course, um, in the perspective of uh, St. Paul Dumaguete, since we are a Catholic uh, institution, firstly, 
uh, we should instill to the students the value of honesty. Okay, I think that's part of the um, ethical ethical policies that they have to follow in taking the exam. But of course, we cannot uh, we cannot uh, what do you call this? We cannot easily measure no honesty with regard to uh, taking the examination. So what we can do is that aside from the paper and pen uh, paper and pen type of examination. We also have the performance-based examination just to ensure that uh, the students really have acquired the expected outcomes, all right? And then aside from that, yeah, I think uh, Mr. Uh, Kian uh, mentioned about the open book, open book strategy or open book exam that could also be possible um, only it, that requires a lot of, you know, preparation or a lot of creativity in the teachers on the teacher's part because uh, she or the teacher has to really design the question from um, lots to the higher order thinking skills. Okay, so it's it's a matter of how we design our test questions. Okay, so I think that's uh, that that I hope I answered the question. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Tish and Anar. And now, so we will end our Q&A session and we'll move to the closing ceremony. <laughs> Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your attention as well as your active participation in the virtual seminar on innovations in higher education, leadership and management, Leaders' roles and strategies for assuring institutions' qualities to thrive in the pandemic, which is conducted by Siberi Track. Now, may I invite Dr. Do Thi Hoi Thu, Dean Division of Education of Siberi Track, Vietnam, to deliver the closing remarks. Uh, thank you very much, Ms. Thao. Can you hear me well? Yes. Thank you, Thao. Uh, distinguished speakers, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Dr. Ho Thanh Mi Phuong, Director of Simeo Regional Training Center in Vietnam, Simeo Ritra, it is my great honor to extend our sincere thanks to all of you, especially distinguished speakers, for your great contribution and participation in this virtual seminar. Without which I strongly believe that the seminar cannot be accomplished successfully like this. Ladies and gentlemen, we all fully understand that we don't have sufficient time for all of us to tackle and address critical issues, to discuss and exchange information, experience and innovation, as well as strategies and solutions in relation to institution quality assurance in the seminar. However, I really hope that this seminar is serving as one of the initial steps for Simeri Track in creating uh, a common professional platform for all of us in relation to discussion and exchange of expertise and experience in the field especially during the challenging period of time. Above all, I really hope that the seminar can provide good opportunities for all of us in terms of developing networking and linkages for new future collaboration among educators, researchers, and professionals in different areas of interest. With all of these ob objectives, there will be certainly more professional and thematic activities and programs to be conducted by CMEL Retract in the near future. And in the way to that, I really hope to receive your continued support and assistance contribution to these activities and programs. Ladies and gentlemen, may I announce the seminar closing and also thank you again very much for your valuable contribution and assistant in making this now a great success. Please take care, stay healthy and safe, keep in touch and see you all in person very soon. Goodbye. 
Thank you very much, Dr. Đỗ Thị Hoài Thư. Ladies and gentlemen, before saying goodbye, please allow us to introduce our next seminar on October the 7th, 2021. Simeri Drug will organize the seminar on internationalization of higher education in the pandemic landscape, transforming challenges to opportunities for development for all participants who are interested in the topic. Speakers of the seminar are invited speakers from different universities in Southeast Asia and from international organizations who are going to share their experience and expertise about internationalization during and post COVID-19 pandemic. If you are interested in joining our seminar, do not forget to like our Facebook page or subscribe to Simeon Retrax YouTube channel to keep up with our upcoming events. Thank you very much. Besides, please kindly help us to complete the evaluation and certificate validation form by scanning the QR code or by clicking on the link sent by Simeon Retrax team. Your feedback will help us to improve the quality of our future activities. Please ensure the spelling of your full name and email address before submitting the form to us. We use a system to generate the certificate of participation according to your provided information. We are sorry for not being able to fix the certificate after sending. Please check your email for any updates from us. Your e-certificate will be sent to you by email soon. For any inquiries, please feel free to contact us by email below. Again, thank you very much, everyone. Stay safe. Goodbye. Have a nice day and hope to see you soon. Okay, thank you. Goodbye. Hope you will Bye. stay well during the COVID-19 pandemic. <laughs>